Welcome back to WGAL's debate with the candidates running for the 11th Congressional District in Pennsylvania, Republican incumbent Lloyd Smucker, Democratic challenger Jess King. Okay, right out of the gate, we're going to talk immigration. Congressman Smucker, we begin with you. Both parties agree our immigration system is broken, much like my earpiece right now. Tonight, thousands of Central Americans are caravanning toward the U.S. border in Mexico. Lancaster County takes 20 times more refugees per capita in than any other place in the U.S. You just alluded to this being a very welcoming place. Would you welcome this new wave of immigrants and give us two things you would do to fix the immigration system? So I don't think anything speaks more clearly for the need for a wall than a caravan of seven to 10,000 uh, people coming to our country. So you know, think, 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 think. Think about the number of individuals that is. That'd be like Columbia, the entire city of Columbia coming across the river to York County. Um, we just simply, can, we cannot, we just simply cannot uh, allow pe people to come into the country without knowing who they are, without knowing, uh, uh, you know, they would be a perfect opportunity. We know that individuals want to harm us, want to enter our borders. Uh, who, who intend to harm us, and that would be a great way for them to do that. And imagine if we allowed them to come in of what would follow. I mean, tens and probably hundreds of thousands of people. Why do you think uh, they I th want to harm us? I, I, I think initially, uh, you know, what we have to do on immigration policy uh, is start with securing our border. And in some places, that is a wall. We already have a wall in the San Diego, San Diego area and in other areas, but it also is uh, technology. Uh, it's not practical to put a wall in every, every place, but we can have operational uh, control of the border. Uh, it's technology, it's additional, uh, 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 additional finances, additional dollars uh, to fund border security agents. And then that's the first step. I think that we could, uh, after we secure the border, we should find a fix for the DACA and the Dreamer kids. And then we have to fix our legal immigration system, which is absolutely broken. Okay, thank you. Jess King, uh, would you welcome the new wave of immigrants and what would you do to fix the immigration system? So we do have a operational control of the border. We do have a secure border. We do have rules and uh, enforcement and we do. And the idea of building a wall is, and, and what's happening in this political moment, I feel like is really important to talk about. It's being used in a midterm election to stoke fear and to divide us. These are... These are folks that are fleeing, fleeing poverty and violence in Honduras. And talk to anybody who has lived and worked in Honduras. I know dreamers from Honduras who have told me their stories that we could do so much more to engage in what it means to, to support a democracy, to live our values, to see what's happening on the ground in those countries, to keep people from fleeing in the first place because they don't want to flee if they don't have to. If it, you know, you're a mom walking thousands of miles through Central America with your children, you're in desperation. We have laws and the way you seek asylum in this country is you show up at a port of entry and you claim asylum. That is the law on the land. That is what our Department of Homeland Security says. The Secretary of Department Homeland, of Homeland Security says. That is what we need to do. There's so much more I could say about this. We are, are we're distantly related. Our ancestors were relig religious refugees to this community a couple hundred years ago. We have experienced this. We know who we are as a community and playing into this fear is un-American. So Congressman? So, so, uh, uh, so allowing, allowing uh, thousands of people to enter the country, having that occur on an annual basis is not operational control of the border. I've spoken to the head of the border security agents. Uh, we need not only additional resources, we need not only barriers in place, but we need to change the law. The political asylum law today is not working for countries that are not adjacent to us. It's, we're being taken advantage of. But I will say this, we are a country of immigrants. We should welcome people to our communities and to our country who do want to work hard, who want to play by the rules, who want to provide for the families, but they should come through legal means, through an uh, immigration system that is working. And so there's, 
there's a lot that we agree on, but part of what's happening is we don't have a legal pathway for people to immigrate, especially if they have a family member here, especially if they're dreamers. And it is being that legislative fixes to this are being held hostage to politi a political play. And it's not okay. And so we need a, a clean tra path to citizenship for dreamers. And we need to fix the immigration system so that people can see a pathway. Because currently, I've talked to folks who are married to American citizens or in relationship with American citizens who are Mexican nationals who can't find a way to immigrate for more than 20 years. How do you do that if, you're, if half of your life is in this country? We need a pathway that works for people and it's being held hostage. Janelle, you, Thank you. you asked earlier, um, and I want to respond uh, to that, we do have individuals who want to harm us. We have ICE, which was formed after 9-11 which literally they're keeping back hundreds of people on a daily basis who want to harm us. My opponent wants to disband ICE. She's, she's part of a group that, that calls ICE a terrorist group. It would be a terrible mistake. We've, we, have been, we, we, we have been successful in preventing uh, an attack on the magnitude of 9-11, and it's in large part due to the work uh, of, of ICE and others who are working every day uh, to keep us safe. That goal can live alongside the goal of an immigration system that welcomes to our country. We can accomplish that and we should. I think this outlines what an important... I love that you guys are so politically engaged. That's fantastic. But I want to make sure we hear everything that they have to say about this important subject yeah. very quickly and this is going to be the last word. Uh, he knows that's not true. That. He's making claims about me, which he continues to do in his ads and in our debates, as he did yesterday. And I just want to say he knows what's not true, and we are not going to play that game. It's it's being used as something to divide us, uh, and it's it's not okay. We need a path to citizenship for dreamers. We need to fix our immigration system. We need to stop using immigration as a pawn for fear. Are you s okay? okay. I said that was the last word. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, Ms. King, this question begins with you. The latest mass shooting hits hard here in Pennsylvania. 11 dead in a hate attack in Pittsburgh. It's an ongoing problem in our country. On top of the gun violence we report on every day across this district, what are you going to do to stop gun violence and keep us safe? Thanks for the question. This hit me personally. Uh, I lived in Pittsburgh for a decade, uh, very nearby where the shooting occurred. and. It, it really has broken my heart. Um, this happens far too frequently. And I'm thinking about a number of different things. So I think first and foremost about being a mom. My kids come home from school after doing active shooter drills. I'm reminded of one, stories my mom told me when she was growing up in the 1950s of doing duck and cover drills during Soviet Union, Union atomic bomb threats. We're doing the same thing to our kids today. We need to make sure that we're doing everything possible to keep our kids safe. We have a teacher on our campaign who's also a hunter and a gun owner, and I've talked to a lot of hunters and gun owners who agree with us. And he has said that it's easier for, for uh, a hunter, easier to buy a gun in Pennsylvania than it is to go on an elementary school field trip. To me, that's just the question around how we deal with background checks. 95% of us believe in comprehensive background checks, including NRA members and gun owners, but yet, the corporate gun lobby continues to not want those, those kind of legislative pieces passed, and they continue to fund candidates, including Congressman Smucker, who don't pass the legislation that they don't want to have passed. Those are key things that we need to do. When 95% of us believe in comprehensive background checks and 85% of us believe in banning bump stocks that turn weapons of war into, or turn, put weapons of war on our streets, it's not okay. So we need to make sure that we're doing what voters want rather than what the corporate gun lobby wants to boost their sales and boost their profits. Let's follow the money and see where this wraps up. Thank you, Congressman. What can be done to stop gun violence and keep us safe? I mean, I, the, what we saw in Pittsburgh was, was horrific. Uh, we can never uh, stand for violence of that sort, particularly uh, hate crimes against any group of individuals. We've seen some of those uh, in the past several years. And then every school shooting that uh, we've seen is just heart-wrenching. I have a son who's a sophomore at Lampeter uh, Strasburg, and, and I can't imagine 
uh, getting uh, the call that uh, there's a, a, sh a shooting at, at his school. So we have to do everything we possibly can to ensure that not only our kids feel safe at school, but that we keep guns out of the hands of people who want to harm someone else, else with them. Uh, and I have, uh, c contrary to what my opponent has just said, uh, I strongly believe we need to ensure that our background check system is working properly. Uh, and we've seen some failures in that system it, during some of these shootings. Uh, one, the Sutherland shooter uh, had problems at the, in the Air Force that should have been reported, should have been part of, of his history, which would have prevented him from owning a gun. And the Parkland shooter, same thing with the FBI and other uh, agencies. I voted for a bill that we passed in the House. It unfortunately has not yet passed in the Senate, but it needs to. That would require every state to participate and would require federal agencies to report, and if they didn't do so, there would be a penalty. It's important we do that. On bump stocks, I have only became aware of what bump stocks are after the Las Vegas uh, shooting. I immediately sent a letter to the President, to ATF, asking them to review our policy around bump stock, any device that makes a legal weapon, that turns a legal weapon into something that operates like an illegal one, should be uh, outlawed. And they're working towards that. They're in a, a comment mm -hmm. period right now, but we're going to see bump stocks outlawed. Okay. Thank you both. I want to add one other thing to that. Okay. I, just, I think part of what happened in Pittsburgh that we didn't have time to talk about, the, the tenor of our politics right now, the vitriol that goes on in our politics, the, the national discourse around fear in particular. The shooter that we know, he went into that synagogue because he was inflamed about refugees coming to this community and that a Jewish organization that was resettling refugees was at blame. This to me, as a community that resettles 20 times the number of refugees than anywhere else in the country per capita, this hits home. I mean, we, could, we can imagine this happening at Church World Service in Lancaster City. Like, and part of that is a dynamic that's coming from the top down around the narrative of what, who we're afraid of. And again, going back to the caravan, going back to immigrants mm -hmm. coming to this country, the narrative around fear is un-American, and we need to stop it. Sorry. 30 seconds. That, that might be one thing that uh, we agree upon. And, you know, I was in Washington when a, a shooter from the other side of the political spectrum uh, shot and attempted to kill multiple Republican uh, congressmen and, of course, uh, uh, injured uh, uh, Steve Scalise, a, a good friend of mine. Um, we, we must. It, it's unfortunate today that we can't uh, talk together about issues that we disagree on. We talk past one another. I've seen it two years in this office. Uh, I have seen that kind of rhetoric come from people that, who oppose my policies. Mm -hmm. It has to be toned down. Well, I know we've got more issues to talk about tonight. Thank you both. We are about halfway through this final debate of their campaign season. We'll have more questions for the candidates coming up.